What's on the docket today? What will we document? Hello and welcome to Doll Doc. Today I will be showing you the new way I recolor my doll bodies. I start out by diluting some alcohol ink with 91% isopropyl alcohol. I apply this wash to the joints to help neutralize the skin color. The color of ink I use depends on the doll's original skin. For a Blue Laguna doll, I'm using a light orange, and for Frankie's green skin, I used a light red. I found the ink doesn't scratch off as easily as paint, so if I do end up getting some flaking at the joints, which usually always happens, having the ink here will help hide it some. I seal her with Mr. Super Clear and prepare my paint. I'm going to be using a paintbrush, makeup sponge, alcohol activated paint, and 99% isopropyl alcohol. The paint I'm using is the Zombie Palette from Skin Illustrator. I had this from when I did special effects makeup. To activate the paint, I add a little bit of the alcohol and begin to mix. I want the consistency thicker than watercolors, but thinner than acrylic paint. This will give the doll nice coverage. From this point on, when I handle the doll, I always try to wear a cotton glove to help from scratching the paint. Then with a makeup sponge, I begin to dab the paint onto the plastic. Since alcohol dries pretty quickly, I try to work as fast as possible, making sure to get an even coat. The first layer might look a little splotchy, but don't worry, once you have the second layer, things will look a lot more even. I like using alcohol activated paint because it allows me to use less layers to color correct the skin. I used to use soft pastels, which normally would take me about eight layers to build up the skin color I wanted, but with alcohol activated paints, it only takes me two layers of the actual paint before I'm ready to blush the body. I like to remove the forearms and the hands from the doll to make sure I get them evenly coated. And the first layer I usually apply with a paintbrush because any streaks left from this first layer will be covered by the second layer. And this also helps ensure that they get a good solid coverage. Once all the pieces are dry, I seal them with a layer of Mr. Super Clear. Now she's ready for coat two. This coat will help cover up any of the splotchiness from coat one and give her a more even skin tone. You can start to see the difference between the two legs, where one has one layer and the other has two. So what are the pros and cons to this method? In my opinion, the main pro is the coverage in fewer layers. And the main con is the cost. These paints can get pricey, but they last a long time. I advise getting the Skin Illustrator Skin Tone Palette first and the zombie palette after if you want to add things like veins, scars, and other marks to your doll. The zombie palette is what I had on hand, so that is why I'm using that and eventually want to get the skin tone palette. For the second layer on the forearms and hands, I go in with my makeup sponge. One benefit to using a makeup sponge is you get no streaks and a little bit of a pore-like texture. Once dry again, I sealed it with MSC. This time I did two layers of MSC before moving on to blushing with my soft pastels. To blush this particular body, I used a combination of light browns, copper, and pink to give some blushing to the joints. This really adds life to the skin of the doll. When blushing a doll, I try to think about if the doll was real, what part would be moving and what parts would be shadowed. And I add 
blushing to those areas. Before blushing her elbows and wrists, I add the arms back onto the doll's body. This helps everything look nice and even. I noticed the area where Laguna's fins used to be um, wasn't taking the paint like the other plastic, so I added a bit more on and dabbed it with a sponge. It looks lighter when wet, but dried even with the other skin. Here I'm just swatching out some different variations of skin tones you can get with this palette. At first I was using paper and that was not working as well. It looks really splotchy because the alcohol soaks right into the paper before you can blend out the color. So I moved on to the back of a disposable plate so I could show you a few other techniques you can use the alcohol paint for. I'm not really worried about blending here, I'm kind of just playing around with the paint. I wanted a nice layer to show you how to do some freckling and some veins if that's something you wanted to add to your doll. To create freckles, I use the splatter technique and normally I would um, splatter the paint on and then wipe away the freckles that I thought were too large off with a cotton swab. This paint also works really well for veins because it does have a good transparency to it so you can do um, small veins on dolls and here I'm going to do some larger veins just to show how veins on skin might look. Remember that usually the main vein has smaller ones that branch off of it, kind of like a tree. Veins can also be different colors on the skin. A lot of times they're seen more as blues or purples. And if you feel like your veins are a little too dark, go over them with a thin layer of your skin tone and that will make them look even more like they're underneath the skin. Then on the other side of the plate, I decided to do a blended out version of the skin tone to show how realistic this paint can look skin wise. Because when you look at human skin, it's not one solid flat color. There's subtle variations to it. I love using this technique and will definitely be using it in the future. And make sure you come back next week to see who this body belongs to. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on your notification bells. I post a new video each week. Thanks for watching.